greetings everyone from around the world and um i thought let's begin um our session ai and education and we're delighted uh to have this session uh, we'll let each of the panelists introduce themselves uh, i'll give a brief introduction some questions and hopefully some good interchange and dialogue um I will just say uh, I'm Ralph Wolf, a uh, member of the WASP board, WC, the uh, World University Consortium board, and spent the last uh, half decade, uh, half decade, half century, I should say, in higher education in a variety of roles, uh, most recently before retirement, uh, running quality assurance agencies in the U.S. Um, I wanted to, uh, the, education has been a dramatic, a, a major uh, emphasis of the World Academy. Obviously, the only way we're going to transform society is through education about a need, the need for a new mindset, uh, for a new approach to the problems, as uh, the previous panel uh, really addressed. And technology has proved to be a very powerful force for allowing what we call the massification of higher education. There simply could not be enough universities or schools with, uh, to provide education for all those in the world that need it. Uh, and online learning technology has provided means to allow for tremendous expansion and transformation of the of, of education, and it's become a huge industry. The question is, what is the impact of AI going to be? Uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, Jim and I was watching one of the, um, the videos on your website, and I realized that call it it should be called augmented intelligence. It's been around <laughs> for a half century, and uh, in various forms. In my own, in the lab, in preparing for the panel, I've uh, interviewed a number of people from a variety of uh, sources, uh, including serial entrepreneurs who are working in the AI field uh, to faculty. And I would just say I've heard everything from it's a total hype uh, and that uh, because there is in, uh, inability to get access to most of the data that's available in the world and it's not there yet, all the way to it's going to uh, revolutionize uh, education at all levels and will um, be as big as Gutenberg's uh, printing press. Uh, so somewhere we need to find the space in between. Uh, a, a, I would report that a survey came out, two surveys came out yesterday in the U.S., that um, over the last uh, two semesters, over half of all the students surveyed said they were using AI. And they found that it helped them improve grades, become more efficient. But only 14% of faculty in another survey found that a wanted to use AI. They felt very concerned about the ethical issues, about cheating, all of the negative things that we've heard. And those concerns are not entirely unfounded. 27% of the students found that AI uh, created misinformation or made up entirely things that were inaccurate. And one of the huge challenges we're going to face is how do we determine which is truth and which is false or misinformation? Uh, Pavel, one of our panelists, has used the term. We've emerged, we've moved into a post-truth world or a post-truth culture that uh, hopefully, Pavel, you'll talk about in a um, in an excellent post. So we need expertise to address this. So I asked AI uh, myself, perplexity using perplexity. What are the best uses of education? And I think. There are some very powerful uses, and I'll just uh, highlight uh, the, uh, the top ones they cited. Personalized learning, adaptive learning, automated grading and feedback, automated task automation, 
tutoring, assistive technology for those with disabilities, data analytics, language learning, predictive analytics, curriculum design, interactive learning experiences. There's tremendous experimentation with all of those areas going on from Khan Academy to a lot of uh, centers now in higher uh, Khan Academy for K through 12 and um, higher education innovation centers. So our panel today, and we've shifted Humana to a panelist because of the work. I, I wanted to, uh, we'll bring very different perspectives uh, to this, uh, an academic perspective as Amin, who works in, uh, as a faculty member, has is using AI um, and has written about it. There's an article in Cadmus that he's co-authored about it. Mm -hmm. um, Shimana is uh, wanted to address the issue. There's this whole issue of digital divide. Who is going to have access to this technology, to online learning, and now to a, to the impact of AI? And Shimana, with uh, her company Build Within, is demonstrating that it can be used to address the those in the U.S. For example, there are 38 million people without degrees who need skill development, upskilling, and we need to address the needs of those people, not only the elite who go to the top schools. And Pavelushka is a futurist who's written extensively on this issue. So hopefully that we can bring multiple perspectives to this issue about the future of AI, how it's being used well today, and uh, challenges that we face. So, I mean, let's begin with you and to say as a faculty member, you obviously are not one of the 14%. Oh, I should add one other statistic I thought was really interesting from the survey. Obviously, this is not you. 40% um, of the students said faculty absolutely barred them from using any AI in their classroom. And meanwhile, they're using it. So we have this huge gap. And I wonder what, uh, if you might talk to your experience of how AI might be used in education as a faculty member who is in fact already using it. Yes, um, thank you, thank you all for that. Um, thank you for having me here today. To present myself quickly, I'm Amin Jawadi, I'm a straight professor at ECE in Paris, in France. So um, I'm affiliated to a laboratory of research in digital engineering and sciences. So uh, as you said, Ralph, earlier that, you know, you ask, you know, ChatGPT, for example, you know, how to use AI in education. And then you got, you know, multiple, you know, multiple uh, responses for that. And indeed, actually, this is what you are noticing today in, uh, in our school which is a graduate school that, you know, we, uh, we train, you know, students to, to be engineering in digital, in digital sciences and, uh, and digital engineering as well. So um, we use, uh, I use artificial intelligence in my class. This is for sure, because artificial intelligence today is here and has, when we have to cope with it, we can't really ban it, you know, for students. Uh, if we ban it inside the organization, uh, they will use it outside. This is for sure. So, um, so we have to cope with it. We we need we need to help them how to use AI today for 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 the learning process. So, uh, from my perspective, maybe I will I will take two perspectives. From my perspective, as a teacher, as a, as a professor in the school, and then as a student, uh, from my perspective, AI. Um, helps me a lot in in doing a lot of stuff it eases the process to um to you know to prepare the content that, that i will present to the student uh it helped me to to make uh, the lessons more interactive with the students um if i find for example a student that have a lack of um of knowledge or is struggling with the, with the concept uh, i can go to the ai and ask ask them to uh, to help me in in how to cope with this, so I can adapt. You know, the I can personalize the learning for them with the help of AI, for, of course. Um, so it also helps me a lot in doing a feedback in, in feedback in real time with with the help of AI. 
So, um, for example, I can uh, uh, I can do at any time a quiz, uh, a test uh, quickly, and then I can get you know the feedback quickly as well. So the student will get you know the, the feedback quickly, and this is very important because this is time consuming. For example, for grading, um, and also it gives me a, a lot of insight in data. How how can I track the performance of uh, of the student and how I can adapt, you know, the learning for him or for her? Um, uh, so this is from uh, from my perspective, from the student's perspective, because we ask students if we ban artificial intelligence inside the school, what we're gonna do? Uh, they said, no, 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 we have to have it and uh, we have to use it, uh, and it's very helpful because sometimes the students. Um, can't ask the, the question to the teacher quickly, so he goes. I mean, he goes to the AI and ask the question and get you know, if, uh, you know, I, I, I get and he gets actually the response immediately uh, for simple questions. So they can expand um, their learning and they can back to us for specific questions for you know for the difficulties that they can encounter. So. Yeah, it helps me a lot in um, in the in the in the learning process. This is for sure, and for us actually as well, it helps help us a lot. You know, for creating the content to present to them, and then for the for grading. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of challenges for uh, generative AI specifically because uh, we have you know the cheating problem. Maybe we'll talk about this later. So um, I don't know if we talk about cheating now or later on. What do you think, Ralph? Let me ask you, if I may ask you a question as a faculty yeah. member, do you get training in AI or? Well, uh, this is the, yeah, oh, this is what we need. Uh, this is what we need really. Uh, we need, you know, for all teachers and faculty members, you know, to be trained to use AI. Uh, of course, there are different AIs, there are different tools. Uh, we can get training to all of them. But at least, um, you know, for the most important things, specifically for ChatGPT and generative AI, uh, we need actually to train, you know, the faculty members how to use them effectively and responsibly, and then train students as well how to use them. Uh, not like, um, not like, you know, to to get the response for the question, but rather as assistant or an aide to to get the response, and then to think, you know about the creativity and how to get you know more efficiency with with the help of ai and not to use it like you know only uh, like that you know without any responsible uh, way so uh, we need you know we need absolutely you know to be trained about how to use ai in um, in teaching or in integration in general this is um, this is very important point. Um, many institutions started to do that. You know how to to train you know the, the faculty members uh, and how to use AI uh, in education. Uh, but we we uh, we have this problem that you know we have so many tools today, uh, AI tools. So so we need you know to get you know many people you know to train you know uh, the faculty members. Thank you. Let's come back to the issue of cheating and then as a second round, if we may, the whole issue yeah. of the ethics of AI. Uh, if I may, uh, let's turn to, to Shimana, and you created a company that deals with uh, what I would say the digital divide, the, the underserved, those who are not, uh, those who need to enter the workspace or be upskilled in the workspace. and. Uh, how are you using AI? You've created your own AI program, I see, and is it proving beneficial? And it's very similar in some ways to what Amin is talking about, about tracking students, but in a very different uh, way of with apprenticeships and internships. So please tell us how you're using AI. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, first, the power of AI in education is unlimited right now because a lot of what we're doing, we didn't do three years ago. And so we're learning every day what works best. And so my first sentence is to say is 
shouldn't be artificial intelligence. In my opinion, it's more like augmented intelligence. And you mentioned this before, because it's really made from humans. So uh, it mirrors who we are. It comes from language that we speak. And so it, it really is human. And, and I feel like uh, part of the fear that you uh, shared earlier from teachers uh, also comes from the branding that we have uh, in this topic. And I think this type of conversations can be helpful to change a little bit of that uh, perception of AI. So uh, we, Build Within, is a software company based in the United States. And our team is fascinated by people and also the use of technology to help individuals realize their potential, but also help companies, employers, identify and um, nurture talent that can be extremely helpful to the company, that can be a productive employee. So we are at the intersection of education and workforce. And we call our field, which is a new field, skills innovation, because regardless of degree or career uh, experience or work experience that are skills. And these skills are horizontal and they are vertical at the same time. We all have some skills. There's no one person with zero skills and there are no better skills or worse skills is more of a fit to a job. And so what we do at Build Within is to create technology that helps anyone, whether they have a degree or don't, whether they are 17 years of age and do not know what is next for them, to someone that retired and wants to keep working. Um, and how do all of these individuals use the tools is through on-the-job training. We believe tremendously in the power of practice. Uh, for example, um, some of our tools will help someone that is a career changer to learn new skills and stack those skills to what they already have. We have AI coaches that will support someone who does not speak the language that is needing and get work done through an AI coach that translates the question or the answer. Uh, we also use AI coaches for the explanation of testing. So let's say someone is in the workplace uh, with an expired certification. That happens a lot in technology. And it may need to take this certification again while working. Well, AI coaches for text test preparation will help that person, quiz that person, go back and forth uh, trying to make sure that he's understanding of the knowledge. So we use AI as an enhancement of the human capacity through applications that are specific to the needs of that specific employee or a person trying to break into a job, whether it's their first job, or is their best job that they want to, to do. Um, another point I, I would love to, to make and that came from your question is the fact that the underserved is um, a big priority for us. And that is true. The reason being uh, because there is a, an increasing, even though in perception is a decreasing, but in practice in the past years, we have seen more college degrees um, required for jobs that didn't require it. But we do see in the press a lot of CEOs saying we don't require degrees anymore. But in practice, in the job descriptions, in the interview process, the degrees are, have actually increased in number of requirements, which is interesting because you don't see that, like I said, in the press, in the legislations, you see the opposite. So we've seen an increase. The second thing is like, we have data that shows that the majority of people in the world, they don't have a traditional university degree. And in fact, in the United States, 
which is a country that does not have a dual education program with apprenticeships like Switzerland or Germany and most of Europe, in the U.S., even in the U.S., only 62% of Americans have a college degree. And out of that 62%, only 50% use that degree for work. The rest of that 50% has graduated and then they do now something completely different than they study for. And they're using different skills in that job. So that degree not necessarily is helping them. There's another data point in the U.S. that underserved populations are not better off with having a degree. In fact, many of them, there are specific case studies on people who, with a degree, they're more poor because now they have college debt. And so while I am a big proponent of uh, having an education of any kind, I also believe, and our company believes, in the power of choice and giving people the opportunity to learn at every age. And this is where AI can be extremely helpful and equalizer, especially from for someone who does not have a lot of uh, traditional education, and especially in the workplace, which is not by practice, in a, you know, generally is not a place where lifelong learning is nurtured. Very important. I have <clears throat> worked in that field too, and there are 19 states that have said college degrees are not required, but the practice is if you're sorting out, a degree is a sorting mechanism uh, to exclude those who have skills. Pavel, uh, let's, uh, we'll come for a second round and come back, but Pavel, uh, as a futurist, you've written a lot about the future of AI, about uh, uh, also some of the shadow side of AI, and uh, what's your sense about where we are in the development of AI and the and between now and the future that's going to revolutionize education? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, so first of all, um, I think it's important to remember that uh, AI is an exponentially developing technology. So in this sense, it actually is not linearly evolving. It qualitatively shifts in its capacity uh, at the scale that is not, um, is not what human societies basically are used to. So we are facing some kind of factor in our human systems that we are not usually accommodated to. Um, the, the exponential uh, evolution means that uh, what AI has been able to do a year ago, what it's able to do now and what it will be able to do in five years will be radically different things. So, for example, now already now, the idea that AI can be a thinking partner for every professional is what technologies like ChatGPT4 can do. But the next generation of ChatGPT, ChatGPT5, can do much more than that. So if we think, how do we adapt to technologies like this? How do we integrate them? Will they revolutionize education? Of course, they will. And um, I'm going to talk about few scenarios right now, and maybe we can expand in the second round. Uh, but one of the things we need to remember is that, uh, that's what Jimena talks about, is that uh, professionals that are going to learn with AI will also use it in their workplace afterwards. So we cannot uh, create a sterilized space of learning, which is free from using AI, and encourage uh, students not to use AI to show their personal creativity and then go to the workplace and use AI there. So we have to accept that AI will be factor of our working environments everywhere. So we have to integrate it into every aspect of learning as well, which means that we have to change our evaluation approaches. We have to change the way we organize our learning journeys and so on. So um, as you uh, uh, rightly say, uh, Ralph, uh, we are currently in between the dark scenarios in the evolution of AIs and really optimistic ones. The truth will lie probably somewhere in the middle. 
uh, but we have to be aware that there are both the dark and, and, and the bright ones. So, for example, if we think about the personalized learning, um, which is like I, I call it the holy grail of education, because uh, every uh, education system wants to be really personalized for every learner. But at the same time, they currently operate on the standardized approaches. So if you think, how can AI amplify it? Uh, the optimistic scenario I call something like mirror on the wall kind of situation, where you have a, a digital mirror constantly feeding back to you how to amplify the best qualities in you, how to see where you can evolve. So some kind of magic mirror supporter, which can help you build up what uh, Vygotsky called the zone of proximal development, and constantly grow in those uh, opportunities. But the darker side is what we can call the gold cage, the golden cage scenario, where the same tools are used to constrain learners, to constantly scaffold them, to constantly kind of guide them in a way that people lose the ability to be explorative, to be courageous. They constantly rely on this tool and they're kind of in the beautiful environment that constantly supports them but they're in the golden cage and they lose the ability to have those initiative, for example. So these are like, let's say, two parameters. Same goes with teachers. It can be a beautiful teacher assistant, enhancing teachers, liberating them from administrative work. But it can also start replacing teachers and actually making them redundant in many regards, which, of course, is will, will require teachers to rethink a lot of like what do they actually do with students. If, if AI constantly, again, controls them and, and reduces them to some kind of Uber driver who is told how to, you know, drive on the prescribed uh, route. Uh, if we think about inclusivity, AI can open up to the world of knowledge, but it can also hone in and say you can only use such and such resources. So um, I can continue on and on, that, uh, but I think the main message is this, that we can see AI either as a tool that liberates and empowers learners and actually accompanies us on, the, on that learning journey for life, being our supporter and like a, 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 a guide in that path. Or it can be a tool to actually oppress and limit human capability. And the choices with our designs and our mindsets and our choices. And to finish my statement, I think our systems up till now, the industrial education, as some people call it, have been more oppressing than liberating. So we need to start rethinking what are the principles we are using in education in general and how do we use AI to cement those principles or do we use it to evolve those principles? And who's going to make those decisions, right? At, at the granular level, it's each teacher. At the macro level, it's going to be those who put the information in the large language learning models and how, how students are, are invited to do this how are they do they have a voice in in this process as well that's right yeah i want to go to the uh, back to uh, i mean you you raised the issue of cheating i'd like to broaden it from cheating to the larger ethical issues that ai represents cheating being one of them uh, one of the big concerns that we all have is that, uh, a, just as Pavel is saying, AI can lead people into a misinformation trap. It can lead people into, um, and we see this in, I mean, this has been throughout history. History is always the story of the victors, but who defines curriculum, right? And what goes into a curriculum and what information, particularly in some of the humanities and social sciences. And so how do you work with students to be able to discern? I think a question for all of, all of us, for the panelists, but let me ask, let's go around and say, how do we educate around the, eth to make determinations around the ethical issues? And I'll just say one thing I was, um, listening to a podcast of an MIT professor who has uh, been working with AI and businesses and saying that um, you still need the expertise. So let's say with the radiology for x-rays, AI can read x-rays equally as well as a human and in some cases can discern areas that a human could not see. 
but it can also make huge mistakes. So somebody needs to be able to evaluate that human capacity. But the same is true about truth and misinformation and disinformation, which exists already in the internet. So I wonder, in, uh, now you're dealing with hard science in, in physics and the like, but it's not just an issue of cheating. And I wonder if we might uh, address that issue of integrity, ethics, discernment that is going to make the difference as we continue to see AI expand uh, throughout uh, all of the workplace and education. I mean, I begin with you. Are you muted? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Ralph. Yeah, my microphone is closed. So, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, cheating is not you now a great you know, word for, for ethical use. Or maybe we'll talk about ethical use of AI, AI rather than, you know, cheating. So uh, what we do here is, um, is really to, we, we educate students a lot about how to use this artificial intelligence, you know, responsibly. So that means actually we, we talk about uh, integrity a lot. Uh, about the potential consequences of misuse of uh, these artificial intelligence tools. So um, usually what we do, um, a lot of training, a lot of workshop with them. Uh, we, you know, we try actually to educate them how to use uh, specifically um, generative AI, uh, like ChatGPT as um, Bart, etc. So uh, we told them, okay, we're gonna use them. We have the we have the response. We have the solution for our for our question for our problem. But we need actually use it like an assistant, um, like um, not a shortcut. No, we want to copy paste the response. Uh, we will go and then we talk together how to work together in collaborative way and try to to get the solution together. So um, we, we do a lot of ethical training workshop with the students, with the faculty members as well. Uh, this is uh, the most important thing because uh, we have this problem of plagiarism. We have this problem of cheating. We have the problem of uh, take the credit of someone else um, because we don't know what's behind uh, these AI tools uh, like, uh, you know, database, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it goes through workshops, uh, training, uh, education. We try to train you know, the students how to use, you know, these AI tools. I will say cheating has been an issue ever since uh, ever since time began. I believe. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Over, I've seen surveys that show over a quarter of students identified that they cheated in the last term in one fashion or another. There's contract mm. papers, there are all kinds of uh, sources and pre-AI. So it's yeah, only... I, I, it if only... I can, yeah, if I can add something, Ralph, to, to the yeah. cheating uh, situation, I think uh, the concept uh, of ethical anything applies to everything, right? I think what happens with technology is that it's often at the center of the controversy because it, people that don't use technology or create technology avidly, they tend to fear it. And those that have used it or created it with, with in, in depth, they fear it too because they see the power. So fear normally causes, um, you know, confusion and it causes uh, sometimes uh, some, those that need these tools the most to be restrictive restricted from using them. So I do wa worry a lot about the, the negativity that is that is surrounding AI because that has been happening with technology as well in the past years. And to me, when people talk about cheating, uh, you know, the, the issue is really not cheating. That's, it's, it's the, it's not the, 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 the tool, the method is not the issue, is the action and why is that happening? So if, if a child or a, a a uh, college student is cheating is because that teacher uh, interaction didn't work for that person to learn what needed to learn. And so you have a, a teaching and learning issue, not a cheating issue, in my opinion. That's just a symptom. 
um, in, in the workplace, when I have had this, this question coming up, when um, one time we, we onboarded a um, apprentice into the platform that is used in the US by many employers to manage uh, register apprenticeships, official apprenticeships. And um, the manager said, well, I don't know if um, my I feel comfortable with Johnny uh, using Maestro, which is the name of our uh, main AI coach. Um, and she said, I don't know if I, I feel comfortable with him using Maestro because I don't want him, I want him to get his work done. How am I going to know if he's getting his work done? Which could be another form of cheating. So I asked her, I said, um, uh, you know, what, what do you, what is, what are your outcomes? What are you trying to, to accomplish? And this was a digital marketing apprentice. And so she said, well, I want our brand to improve. I want, I want everyone to recognize the work that we do and see it in our social media. Um, so I said, what else? Well, I want to have more followers in social media. What else? Uh, I want my custom, more customers coming from those followers. So I said, okay, brand recognition, more social media activity and engagement, more sales. And so I said, so what Johnny is going to be using AI for is to help him come, come up with clever uh, ideas for posts on Twitter. Um, it's going to have several alternatives. Even he, he will he will be able to have these tweet posts ready to go in several languages and it's gonna do it faster. So the ultimate goal is not gonna come from this, but through this assistance, he is gonna be able to be faster, to be more effective, which ultimately can lead to your goal. And I said, would you prefer that he spends half the day thinking about what clever way can be out there to create a tweet post or having a tweet post with bad grammar, or do you prefer that he focuses on the return of investment, on analyzing the data, on adjusting the posts, on making sure that is uh, someone ready to talk to these potential customers and close a contract? And so she said, oh, you're 100% right. Yes, of course. I just didn't see it like that. So I think is is the, the, the fear sometimes blurs our judgment. And that's what we have to try together. And I appreciate this conversation and what uh, Pavel and Amin say, because we have to take these conversations to educate teachers that the train already left the station. And if they don't get on the train fast, the students which are already distrusting the school system, who are already not enrolling in college as much as they, they used to, and also not choosing college, and also dropping out from high school, um, you know, they, they are already doing this. That already, I mean, you can see the chat. We we just hear, we just read in the chat that somebody said, you said that teachers can harm a student. So I think the technology and AI are tools that are used, that should be used, and Pavel said this before, to the better betterment of human, the humankind. And that's on us. And just like teachers have a portfolio of um, supplies, Pens, pen, pencils, maybe a whiteboard, maybe some software, there is also AI. And the last thing, if you don't learn as an educator well how to get technology accessible for your classroom, um, but also if the school system, the principals, the deans don't actually invest in the proper technology, of course, the students are going to go to the free tools. ChatGPT bot is free. Nothing is free in life. You give them your data in exchange. So not because I sell software, but because companies that actually work in applications that have safeguards exist for a reason. So you don't have to 
uh, be in environments where some of the information is going to be wrong, that there are going to be hallucinations and all of those things. They will happen in, in platforms like Build Within, but of course they will happen in platform, platforms that are, they could happen in platforms that are free on the web. Thank you. And I will say what you're also describing, both Amin and you, the need to define clearly the pedagogy and how AI fits in that pedagogy and what the outcomes are uh, and to integrate it as an augmented model. Uh, Pavel, we only have a few minutes left, but you have written uh, thoughtfully about the shadow side, about uh, misinformation, disinformation. How do we get around uh, some of these issues, uh, the same way others have been talking about educate? How do we educate the discernment? Uh, as you wrote about uh, so many journals or so many falsified scientific studies that predated AI, but now AI can accelerate falsification. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um... Yeah, on one hand, uh, as Simena said, uh, the train has already left the station. We are in, in this reality. And actually, I can hear from people that are reviewers at academic journals that they're currently already being flooded by um, uh, AI-generated articles or articles that massively use AI-generated text. And uh, it's just one of... Uh, problems uh, is that can we uh, uh, can we trust AI when it generates these texts? Can we trust AI when it generates, uh, for example, facts for textbooks? Because uh, the problem of uh, AI hallucination uh, has not been resolved so far. It, 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 it hallucinates massively. Uh, and it gets increasingly hard to discern, indeed, for, for us humans to do. Does that field of knowledge or does this reference exist? So we need uh, uh, creating AI that is trustworthy, probably is one of uh, first tasks for really applying it in the context of education and academic work beyond uh, creation of text, uh, administrative tasks and things like this. So that's... Uh, one of the things that is currently explored. Um, the problem is that um, AI uh, can also be used. Uh, let's say there are there is a there there is a problem of ignorance uh, about uh, issues such as AI hallucination, but they can also be an intentional uh, use, like what what you can call malevolent uh, use of. Uh, uh, AI, uh, for example, to plant uh, some kind of knowledge uh, or to construct some knowledge field. Uh, just think about the case of Terranos and how it has been one of the biggest uh, hoaxes, a uh, very unfortunate one, in the medical uh, industry uh, in the last decade, uh, attracting uh, hundreds of millions of dollars and uh, misleading uh, investors. So if we have somebody who wants, who believes that technology can work and start using AI to generate articles to create like a false trail of proven uh, evidences that this, this, this is technology to be invested into, how can we protect ourselves from, from this kind of thing? How can we protect ourselves if uh, some governments want to indoctrinate children on uh, issues that uh, academic communities uh, largely don't believe uh, to be true, especially when it comes to uh, interpretations of history. And uh, But there are many more things, uh, uh, teaching science and so on. These are big risks. Um, and I think they are also coupled with a, a, a risk that we have not discussed, but it's, I think, one of the hugest is Actually, there is a uh, uh, AI can use to indeed uh, amplify the better qualities in humans, but it can also be used to limit these qualities, to uh, take away much of uh, human agency. So, if we couple all of these things, um, we are entering uh, a very turbulent, um, uh, turbulent times ahead of us. You mentioned Gutenberg Press in the beginning. Gutenberg Press, on one hand, liberated human knowledge. It created the whole modern civilization. 
It has also been the seed for some of the most devastating wars and conflicts in the history of humanity, starting with a 30-year uh, war in uh, Europe, uh, the conflicts between Protestants and Catholics. That's only the beginning, and it was uh, made possible with uh, Gutenberg Press. Now, AI is much more potent than Gutenberg Press. It can do much more So, uh, in education and beyond. So learning that this is a, a double-edged sword, so to say, a technology that can be used to good things and to bad things, I think the most important thing is to have transparency around those things, to have clear decision systems, to have some uh, accountability to society, to teachers, to learners, to general public. This will be the most important thing in the design and application of AI as we go forward. Thank you. Uh, we're out of time. I'll just uh, to close uh, by saying uh, thank you all for participating and joining this. We've only barely touched the surface. We need to be careful as in the chat what words we use, how we move forward. I will say one thing we didn't touch on, uh, uh, focused on a lot of my career, is the power of certification and the meaning of a degree and that what AI and personalized education and technology larger than that will could take away the certification or redefine what constitutes certification. Timina, you're doing this in Build Within, certification different from a degree focusing on skills. And I can see a shift that AI can accelerate that process and really challenge the traditional model of what constitutes certification beyond completion of credits and X three or four years in seats in a university, uh, but really about demonstration and evaluation of credits. And to, to connect this all to WAS, how do we instill the values of human security, of sustainability, of human-centered learning, uh, rather than to continue to separate us as much of what social media has the capacity to do? So we're just at the cusp. I think, as you were saying, Pavel, we're in the beginning stage of an evolution of AI. But as we are with the internet and with so social media, and so many other uses of technology. So thank you all very much. Thank those in the chat for listening in. And uh, we can, I hope we can continue the conversation. Thank you. And thank you.